Hey guys, so as promised, when I hit 100,000 views, I'm going to make a new tutorial. So today's the day. Um, we're going to make a responsive navbar tutorial. So we're going to use this basic uh, design for the navbar. And then responsively, we're going to change it to this with a little hamburger menu. Um, and then when you click on the hamburger menu, those list items are going to show again so it can be used on mobile. Um, for this tutorial, we're going to use three of the most basic coding languages that is HTML, CSS, and then we're going to use a version of JavaScript whoops, called jQuery. If I could spell it, there you go. So, HTML is the structure of the site, CSS is how everything looks, and jQuery is movement, functionality, things like that. So we're going to use jQuery to make the uh, this hamburger menu work and have a function to open the menu. So let's dive in. Uh, so open up your code editor and create a new file. Uh, So you want to save it as a HTML file to start with. Save that in your folder as index.html. There you go, you started. So then we need a head. In there we'll give it a title of responsive nav. Um, we'll have a link because we're going to add a um, CSS style sheet in there. So link rel equals style sheet. Oops. Style sheet type equals text slash CSS and href is just going to be um, style sheet dot CSS. Uh, what else? That'll do for now. Um, next, then we need a body. Oops. Body. And this is where all of our code's going to go um, to make the site work. So. If we look back at our design, get rid of that. We've got this is our body, and then we've got a header, the black area. So in HTML, you can use the header tag, which makes everything a lot easier. So that's the black area done. Then inside there, we want to have our text, a logo. Um, so we'll call it a H1 logo. And then we want a UL for the links, these links over here. So a UL is an unordered list. And then inside that UL we have LIs, which are list items. And then because they're going to be links, um, we need A tags around them. So you have A, href. Um, and for now we'll just do the hash symbol because we don't actually have anywhere for them to go. Uh, if you add other pages, that's where you link them to, that sort of thing. So, homework about contact. Home work about contact. And that's essentially it for the coding area. So, if I open up. Do do do. If I open up that, there's our code, so there's our logo, there's our links, but it doesn't look very nice at the minute. So let's jump into Photoshop, get the background colour for their body. Okay, so what we need to do next is create a new file, um, and we'll save this as style, oops, stylesheet.css, and there it is. So the first thing is to add a colour, a background colour to the HTML and the body, so that's just everything. Um, and that colour is going to be a background colour, and we just copied it out of Photoshop, so paste it in there, and there you go. If we refresh this now, the background's changed to a nice grey, um, and there you go, we've started. So next thing, uh, we're going to have our header, and that's got a background colour of black which is six zeros in a row, and there you go. 
Uh, you see there's this little gap around the header, that's because by default there's a margin um, and a padding on the body. So if we get rid of those, just set those to margin zero and padding zero, that gets rid of that. Okie doke. Next thing, so the next thing we have is a header and a H1 inside the header. That's our logo. So we want to change the colour to white, which is six Fs in a row. And there you go, let's change to that. We're also going to add uh, a text transform uppercase, which means that even if you put lowercase letters in there or uppercase or any kind of letter, um, it's always going to be uppercase. And there you go, that's changed. Um, I think that's what our design was. Yep. Yeah. Uh, in the header, uh, sorry, the HTML tag, we're also going to add a, um, a font family of sans serif. Um, just because that's what our design is, there's no serifs on there, it's just a really basic font. And that's changed all the fonts across the whole website now to a sans serif font. Okay, so also to our header, well I'll explain it a bit better. So we want the links to be over on the right and in a line. So what we're going to do is go header ul, uh, list style type, because you can't see it at the minute. But if I change this to red, these have got bullet points on them, so we don't want those. Um, so list style type none. Now if I leave that on red, we'll be able to see it. That gets rid of those. Now you see this gap that we also want to get rid of, that's because the UL has a padding on it. Um, so if we add padding zero, and just to be safe, if we add a margin zero as well. That should uh, get rid of all that gap that we don't want. And there you go. So, last thing, we're going to add a float right, or well, we're going to add a float to the UL. Um, a float literally means which side of the screen you want the object to float on. Um, floats can get quite complicated, but if you keep it nice and simple um, and keep it consistent throughout your website, you shouldn't have any problems. So, we literally want the UL, this list to be over on the right hand side so we're going to float that to the right and we want the h1 to float on the left because we want that on the left hand side um, and if you float some if you float an object its container has to also float otherwise it will disappear so I'll show you what I mean if we refresh that now the red section which is still red will actually disappear and there you go so the logo is on the left the text is on the right but the head has disappeared. So we'll add a float left to that and there you go. So obviously that's not right. We need to add a width to that as well of 100%. So width, uh, sorry, float um, pulls it down to like whatever contents inside it pulls it to that. So now we've added a width, the header will span across the whole width of the screen and there you go. Logos on the left, text on the right, the header goes all the way across and it's perfect. So let's change that back to black. There we go. And uh, we need to style up these links. So we've got header li. We want, oh sorry, header ul li. So we want those to be display inline block. That means they're going to go in a row. There you go. Uh, that's it. Well, yeah, that's it really. Then we need to style the A's inside there. So they're the A tags, like the links. Uh, we want the colour to be white, which is six Fs. We're going to have the same text transform styling to make it all uppercase, just like in our design. Um, so you can see now it's got a capital first letter and then the rest is lowercase. When we refresh it, everything's uppercase, which is perfect. And the last thing, um, we need to have a uh, text decoration of none, which removes the underline, this little pesky underline there, and if we refresh, it's gone. So just to keep in with our design, we'll add a little bit of padding around those links, so the padding can be uh, just 10 pixels maybe. Yeah, you can play around with that, but um, it doesn't really matter. But as you can see, the padding we've applied to every side, so top, bottom, left and right. However, 
our links are stuck to the top, which means there's no padding there. Um, and that's because our inline block is on the li, but the a tag inside the li doesn't have a display. So if we add a display block to that, you can see they push down because now they're using the padding all the way around, which is perfect. Last thing we're going to do then is all of this so that the logo and the links, we're going to add a div around it called container and paste that all back in there. And then we're just going to add this up here because it's sort of a, a parent to everything. Um, div.container, we're going to add a max width of 1200 pixels. Um, a margin of zero auto, which centers that that container. When it's when it shrinks down to twelve hundred, it will center it between everything. Um, and we're also going to add a padding just to tidy up the edges a little bit. So it's going to be zero and thirty pixels, which means zero top and bottom, thirty left and right. So if we refresh this now, it's coming nicely. And there's, when we go down a little bit, there's that little bit of padding there, and it just looks a lot more tidy. So, last thing then, last bit of styling is just to move these down. The easiest way is to open your um, your developer tools, find the UL, and we'll give it a margin top. So, top is first, so it goes top, left, bottom, right. So if we just add a top of 10 pixels, and that doesn't look quite enough. So just keep adding. And there you go, 20, 21, 22 maybe looks perfect. So then we go back into our style sheet and our UL tag here, margin, we need 22 pixels. So that's top, right, bottom, left. And there we go, when we refresh now, that stays down there. And there we go, we've got a perfectly good navigation bar, which um, is responsive down to a certain degree, so on tablets that'll probably look fine. But then when we get to this breakpoint, you know, it's, it's popping onto the next line and it doesn't look perfect. So in the next video, we'll discuss how to make a responsive navbar and uh, use hamburger menus and things like that. So tune in next time.